Hello everyone, this is Donald V2 here with a new playthrough. Um, I'm here today to play a game that probably a lot of people hate, but I, for some, but I, I don't really like. Probably a lot of you already know what this game is, by just the look of it. I really love this game. This game is probably one of my favorite Castlevania games. And I've played them all. And this little boy will probably be brought back later. This boy is important to the plot somehow. I'm not going to spoil why. I have played through, I've never really beaten this particular one, I've played the sequel which is probably, which in a lot of ways is a lot better, but, I love the sequel, I love the sequel though. Anyway, right off the bat we get a character select of either Reinhardt or Carrie. Reinhardt's kind of the Belmont of the game, even though his name is Snyder, not Belmont. He has the whip and she has magic. Pretty simple stuff. They both have completely different storylines. I might play, I'm probably play through as both of them. I'm going to start out as Ryan Hart. The emulator might make some of the stuff look pretty funky, so don't worry about that. And there's the Necronomicon. Also, a little personalized story at the beginning of each of these is also pretty cool. I like that little touch they added there. It's really nice. And if that sounded corny, well, it's an N64 game. You know, get over it. <laughs> Still kind of cool in a way. Okay. Yeah, this game, the controls for this game are actually pretty simple once you try to understand it. First of all, B button is your main attack, the whip. But you also have the left C button, which will do this little dagger thing. The little dagger thing is probably the best way of getting the candles. To hold on to things, you have to hold the A button down while you have to hold the A button down during a jump. You can't just hit the A button and let go. You have to hold it down the whole time. If you let go, you're going to let go of the ledge. And this jump's a little bit tricky to make, but it is worth it. If I remember correctly. I will show you what's inside that candle, but the candle, the items do disappear after a while. And there we go. Yes. Roast beef. Most people who play Castlevania games would know I probably don't need that right yet, but in this game, you get items. You get to hold the roast beef, and that road and the roast beef will heal a good chunk of your health. And I guess the enemies ain't spawning yet because I don't know they're there yet. Oh no's a skeleton. 
Whatever am I gonna do? Oh shoot, it's having a seizure. Watch out. Somebody get a medic. Oh wait, it's already dead. Oh, this doesn't look good. There's like 50 of these guys. What am I gonna do? All I got is a whip and a sword. And knives. Oh, crap. Um, ow. Set off. Anyway. Power up. That kind of works like the power up of the original, uh, Castlevania games. Where you just pick up, I think the maximum you can hold is two. Or, not maximum you can hold, you can probably pick up a whole lot of them, but the maximum you need is two. It only goes up, I think, two levels. And this will lead to our first mid-boss. Already. Door opens slowly. What's behind the door? Oh, shoot. Giant skeleton. Hi. Oh, shoot. Okay, he walks out here. I did not... I forgot about this. I have played this one before, but again... The stages of the other one, the sequel, was a lot different, so... This stage was completely different in two. And the second stage. Oh, I need to get this gold. The gold actually has a purpose other than points. It's actually, as you can see, you have a gold counter. I will try focusing on him because killing him is what the purpose of this is. Nice little chunk of health there. But it's not because I hit him. You gotta hit him like three or four times, then you lose a chunk of health. So it's not like one hit does that. You can see there, I did a few hits there. Aha! I dodged you. Yeah, you see? There you go. It's like two or three hits, then he finally just takes a hit. Okay, I was glitchy. Aha, there we go. One more hit and he should be down. The crystals work as your hearts in this game, so picking them up is very good. Ouch. Uh, don't worry about the health too much. At the end of every stage, you get your health restored and... Yeah. Worry about your health, but not too greatly. And he's down. Sort of. Okay, here comes probably the first... I think this might be the first tricky jump. Awkward. Alright. Well, not really. It's not that tricky, but... Falling does mean instant death. Like in any other Castlevania game. Before this time. And that jewel over there is going to be your that white jewel over there that's gleaming in the distance is going to be your friend or maybe your enemy sometimes but mostly your friend you know why for those who have played they know why but for people who doesn't let me explain not that complicated really get away from me stupid skeletons ah there's a white jewel will you save up to this point yes data saved now the data being saved is kind of like a checkpoint but it's also kind of like Resident Evil in a way I'm kind of running out of time so I'm just going to kind of explain this while the menu is paused it works kind of like in Resident Evil where the items and health you have when you save that's what you have you can't well you can't just use the night you can't just have another item for like no reason you eh I can't speak anyway yeah you don't get your items back if you're doing stuff or anything like that if you if you die and you use an item before you died and you start with the same point you'll have that item back it's just like Resident Evil in a way only difference is you can save as many times as you want and there's no penalty anyway that's all for this video this is Donald V2 signing out. Have a good day, everyone.